Hey there, welcome back. So today we're going to make a game over panel like this that's going to slide in when we're out of moves. We won't be able to interact with the scene anymore. And then we'll have two buttons that we can use, either quit or restart. If we choose restart, it's going to reload the current scene. And if we choose quit, it's going to load the main menu. So stick around and let's dive right in. Hey there, let's dive right in here. So the first thing I want to do is I want to make a new uh, scene for my menu that I'm going to be using. So I'm going to make a new scene. This is going to start with a root node of a canvas layer. And as a child of that, I'm going to make a margin container. And this margin container is going to be set to be full rect. And then my custom constants, my right margin is going to be 30. My left margin is also 30. My top margin is going to be 384. And then my bottom margin is going to be 128. And then as a child of this, I'm going to make a texture rect, uh, which is going to be what's actually going to hold the menu. So I want it kind of low so that, you know, if your thumb is reaching, you know, you really kind of don't want to reach too much higher than this. Uh, I've added some new art to the itch.io assets folder. So if you go there, you'll find uh, these added to it now in the UI folder. So for my texture rect, I'm going to set my texture to be this kind of game over background that I created. And then uh, in here, I'm going to make a child node that's in horizontal box container for the buttons. So each box container. This is going to have two children nodes, both of them texture buttons. So I'm just going to duplicate that last node. Okay. So my each box container under custom constants, I'm going to have a separation of I think 30 is what I tried that looked good. And my margin here, I'm going to have uh, let's do 40 from the right and 40 from the left, and then from the top, let's do. 128. Let's actually do more than that. Let's do 256. All right, cool. Now for my first texture button, and this is going to be the quit button. So quit button. I'm going to open up my textures. I'm going to apply the quit button texture there. And then for my other texture button, this is going to be the restart button. So restart. Again, I'm going to open up my textures and apply the restart button there. So that looks looks pretty even. That looks okay. All right. Now on my canvas layer, I'm going to set my offset to be 576, which is the width of my my scene here. Uh, I'm also going to add a new child, which is an animation player. Now I already made uh, the animation for something sliding in and sliding out. So I don't need to remake that animation. Instead, I can just uh, find my scene, which is my base menu panel. I'm going to go to the animation player node on there, and then I'm going to copy this animation. Actually, yeah. So I want this on slide in because that's the name of the animation. And I'm going to go back over to my new panel that I'm making, my animation player, and oh no. Okay, so I don't want to do it like that. <laughs> Sorry. All right, so here's what I'm going to do. Um, rather than making a copy, because I thought that would work just like copy and paste, but apparently it doesn't. Uh, I'm going to save this as, and then I'm going to create a new folder specifically for animations. Animation. Oh, okay. So create folder. Oh, I already made one. This is actually like my third attempt at making this video. I have this in here, but don't don't worry about that. So I made a new folder for animation. I'm going to call this uh, slide in, slide underscore in, just like it was named in the um, base menu panel. And I'll save that. Now on my unsaved panel, I'm going to add an animation. So I'm going to go to the file folder. I'm going to grab slide in .tres. It's important that this slide in is the same setup as it was in the base menu panel um, for the, the base menu panel slide-in animation because we're going to be using some functionality 
from that base menu panel script. So just to verify here, so slide in just makes it come right in, just like we want it to. Um, all right, cool. Now I'm going to go to my canvas layer here. I'm going to let me get away from my animation here. Just there we go. I'm going to create a new script, and this script is going to inherit from the script that we made for the base menu panel. And I'm going to save it in my scripts folder. And instead of calling it canvas layer, I'm going to call it game over panel. So game over panel. There we go. And I'll save that and create it. So there's a few things I want to do here. Uh, the first thing I want to do is I already have those slide in and slide out functions, so I don't have to remake those. Uh, instead, what I want to do is I want to connect a couple signals from the buttons to this, just like we did with the, uh, the settings in the main menu panel. So I'm going to open up my margin container here. I'm going to grab my quit button. I'm going to go over to node, and I'm going to grab the pressed signal. I'm going to connect that to the main canvas layer. And then I'm going to do the same thing with the reset button. Connect pressed to the main level. Now, what I want to do with these is for the quit button, for now I'm going to hard code this. So I want this to go back to the main menu. So I want to do git tree dot change scene, and then the scene I want to change to. So to get that scene, uh, the one that I want is not main menu panel. What did I call it? There's settings panel, base menu panel, game menu. So I'm going to right click here and copy the path. Sorry for that weird cut. Uh, once I copy the path, I'm going to paste it in here and make sure to put quotations around it. And then for the, uh, for the restart function, I'm going to do get tree dot reload current scene. And then I'm going to save this in my scenes folder as, uh, instead of calling it canvas layer, game over panel. So I'll save this in my scenes folder as game over panel. There we go. Cool. All right, now I'm going to go back to my main game window and I'm going to add an instance of the game over panel in here. So in my scenes, I'm going to find that game over panel I just made and now it kind of sits there off to the side. So what I want to happen is when the game is over, I want to send a signal to tell this to slide in. So I'm going to go to my grid here, which is keeping track of when we're at our end game conditions. Uh, I'm going to put these variables where I have all these counter variables here. So I'm going to add a signal for game over. And then I have a game over function that I made in the last video, which is down here somewhere. Match all, find adjacent pieces. Oh, there it is, very end, declare game over. So instead of just printing game over, I'm going to emit the signal for game over. So I'm going to emit signal game over. And now I'm going to connect that signal to um, the canvas layer I just added. So highlight the grid, go to node, find the game over signal. I'm going to connect that with my canvas layer, the game over panel. And when it receives this, I'm going to slide in. So I'm going to save that um, and let's test it out, see if I broke anything. So I'm going to fast forward through this uh, while I get down, because I got 10 moves here. It's not going to take that long, but I'm still going to fast forward. Okay, so the game over panel went in like it should, and if I try to interact with any of these objects back here, I can't. So Let's check. Let's see if I hit the restart button. So it reloads the current scene. All right, let's do that one more time. And I'm actually not going to fast forward. I'm just going to skip ahead to that. 
uh, panel coming back up and make sure that the quit panel takes us to the main menu. Okay, so now we're back here with the game over panel again. I already tried the restart and let's try quit. So there we go. We have our, uh, our game over panel working with our end game conditions. So now uh, we have to work on a few other things. So before we talk about making level requirements, like you know, make X number of these matches and Y number of those matches. Uh, I'm going to cover uh, how to make sinkers, which would be like the ingredients in Candy Crush, that pieces that generate at the beginning of the board that you have to get to the end of the board. And once we cover that, then we can start talking about uh, finding a deadlock on the board. And once we find deadlocks, then we can talk about generating hints. So we're getting there. We have, we have a lot of stuff done already. Uh, also, relatively soon, I'm going to be talking about making a score bar that actually fills at the top of the screen. So uh, feel free to ask any questions in the description down below. And yeah, everybody out there, have yourselves a wonderful day. If you enjoyed this video, consider giving a like, subscribing to the channel, or telling a friend who might be interested. Also, please consider following me on Patreon. For as little as a dollar a month, you can earn access to tangible rewards, like early access to videos, backer-only videos and series, polls for future topics, streams, and even individual tutoring sessions. You can find a link to that in the description. And as always, have yourselves a wonderful day.